All right, in this video, we're gonna be talking about the mathematics of a mortgage loan. And mortgage loans are determined via a process called amortization, uh, which is an accounting term involving spreading out of payments. Uh, and so what we're gonna be looking at here is mathematically how making payments on our loan uh, ultimately affects what goes to principal and what goes to interest. So first off, let's talk about some of the basic elements, which is a uh, concept of a mortgage. Uh, so the definition of a, a mortgage is it's a loan where a property is used as collateral. So essentially how this would work is you would get connected to a lender of some kind and a lender like a bank or other financial institution, their business model is loaning out money so they can get that money back, but also interest payments. So they have an interest in finding people who have a desire to accrue or have some kind of loan. And then we have a prospective homeowner. So the lender is going to provide the homeowner with a mortgage. And so that mortgage is going to involve providing them with a lump sum so they can use to purchase a home. And then in return, the homeowner is going to make what we call principal and interest payments. And this is where it actually is advantageous to the lender because they're counting on the homeowner over a certain period of time, whether it's 10, 15, 20, or 30 years, to pay off this home with interest, which can in many ways, especially on a 30-year loan, uh, almost double the price of the home. And the homeowner, of course, is then going to take this money and they're going to acquire uh, a property of some kind, at least in this example. So you can change the variables a little bit depending upon the situation, whether they're purchasing a car or whatever. So this is how the conventional process works. Well, what's interesting about this process is the way that the home is paid off is, you, is determined by this process called amortization. So amortization is basically a process of spreading out a loan into a series, series of six uh, fixed payments. So with amortized loans, the amount that you pay is the same, right? For, from month one, to month 360 if you have a conventional 30-year mortgage. But where that money goes changes after each subsequent payment. So the way that amortized loans work is the interest is highest at the beginning of the loan. And then over time, the interest drastically starts to decrease. And so if you were to look at this from the standpoint of like this graph here, and this axis was interest, and this is time. And so this is the dollar value that we pay in interest. It's gonna start off its highest at the very beginning of the loan. And then gradually over time, it's going to decrease, not necessarily in this linear fashion, but it will decrease as time goes on to where you get to the last payment and very little, in fact, is actually paid on the loan. Uh, to just see that, you can look over here to the amortization schedule. So on the left-hand side in this first column, this shows the payment in months. And notice we start with our first payment and then go from our 300, 360th payment, which would be the last on a 30-year mortgage. And notice here that the portion that is going to interest drastically decreases. Out of our $970 to $8 payment, the first month, $700 is going to the mortgage or to the to interest. But by our last payment, only $3.41 is going to interest. And so we pay for the interest on the front end versus the back end of the loan. So just so you can see kind of how this process works mathematically, um, I want to show you just a couple of rounds of making payments. And so let's just assume uh, a couple of things. One, let's assume that our loan... Uh, the money that we get out is going to be $200,000. And so this is our loan. And let's assume that the interest we pay on that loan is 4.2%. And the amount of time that we're going to pay that loan off is going to be 30 years. So N is going to be 30. And we've already calculated our payment. Our payment, represented by P, is going to be $978.03. So what we're trying to figure out is where that money goes. So in the first month, as you can tell, Majority is going to interest. Well, to calculate that, let's say we have month one. What we're going to do is we're going to take our amount that we have outstanding in debt, which is $200,000. We're going to multiply that by our interest rate, 
which is 4.2%. I've converted it into a decimal, which is something you'll need to do to do the calculations, and multiply that by one divided by 12, which represents one month out of 12. What that's gonna do is that's gonna get us $700. This is our interest. Notice that this amount matches what's here on the amortization schedule. And that represents our first month's interest. So when you take that amount and you subtract it from our original or our actual monthly payment, which is the $978.03, you get a remainder of $278.03. This here represents the amount of money that's being applied to our principal. So when you look at the following month, notice that we now have an outstanding balance of nine hundred or $199,721.93. And that's what we calculate the next one on. So if this was the second month, our loan is now $199,721.97. We would still multiply it by 4.2% and then one divided by 12. But this time, our interest is gonna be different. Our interest is actually $699.02. So if we were to do the same calculation and take our monthly payment of $978.03, subtract the interest of $699.02, what we would find out is the portion that is going to principal is actually $279.01. So not fantastic, right? So in a month period, we've essentially between our first month and our second month here, we're a little bit under a dollar is now going towards the principal versus the prior period. But that's how amateurization works. So over the course of making payments, the amount that is gonna be applied to the principal, of course, is going to increase rather dramatically. And this is so that the mortgage company or the lender rather, um, actually is able to recover some of the investment for the additional outlay. So it makes it so that uh, if you certainly pay off the mortgage sooner, obviously you're gonna save quite a bit on, mortgage, on your loan, which is fantastic, and I certainly recommend trying to do that. Um, but it helps to front load the interest, and so they're receiving a, a more significant portion of that sooner, simply because they're bearing a lot of the risk associated with extending the loan, and if default happens, then obviously they don't get that paid, but they do get the home. So that's a little bit about how the mathematics of a home loan works. Uh, just to sum up, again, a lot of the interest is paid on the front end, and as time goes on, the amount of money that is going towards interest decreases, and the amount of money going towards principal actually does um, increase as time goes on. And that's when you see the outstanding balance begin to drop rather significantly, uh, especially as you progress. So notice at 180, this technically is the mortgage is halfway paid off, but we've really only paid off just under $70,000. And then in the last half of the loan, we pay off the other 130,000. So another example, as you can see, of how amateurization affects um, ultimately the principal amount of your loan.